from the scripture that the Messiah has to suffer and rise from the dead and that Jesus is the Messiah. And uh, some of the Jews were persuaded to join, join Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and quite a few prominent women. That was the first church. Many Bible scholars believe that Paul did not stay there only for those three weeks, maybe a few more weeks, to build this church, to put the foundations for this church. And uh, he spent teaching them the doctrines of Christ. And as we look into the book of Thessalonians, we know that he has gone on to tell them about, teach them about the rapture, about the second coming of Christ. And when this beautiful church was going, one person can't remain silent. That is the evil one. And the Jews who had not been persuaded to join, he stirred them up and they got in a mob and they uh, created a ruckus and sent Paul away from Thessalonica. Paul went to Berea and there also there was a wonderful ministry, many committing themselves to the Lord. But these Thessalonians were not, this Thessalonian Jews were not happy at what they did there. They heard that Paul was in Berea and went after them again and drove Paul again from there. And we know that Paul went through Athens, reached Corinth, from where he is writing the first letter to the Thessalonians. So now, as we go through today's verse, we must remember that we are with, in Corinth with Paul, examining what he has written to this Thessalonian church. He begins the chapter thanking God for the Thessalonian church. And uh, while giving thanks, he greets them and he tells that we are praying for you. We are praying for you. And we learned last time about the prayer. And uh, he says, we give thanks to God always for you, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. Faith, hope, and love are pillars and essentials of a church. Here Paul gives some additives. Work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope. Work produced by faith. That's what the NIV translation says. Work produced by faith. If you turn it around to have a clearer understanding, faith produces work. So if you say that I have faith, it has to produce some work. James says that faith needs to be accompanied by work, without which it is a dead faith. James 2.17 Faith by itself, if it doesn't work, is dead. Our salvation is by the grace of God. It is a gift of God. But how do we receive it? It's a gift God has given us. By faith. By believing. So, by grace you have been saved through faith. Which is very important. Unless you believe. Somebody doesn't believe in God and doesn't believe in the Bible, I believe there's no point in arguing with him. Because he doesn't believe. Unless you desire, you believe, faith will not come. Without faith, no salvation. The Lord himself in Matthew 21, 20 to 22 said, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. Faith moves mountains. This is the Lord Jesus himself telling. And he also said, and whatever 
things you ask in prayer believing you will receive that's the working of faith unless you believe so when we pray believe because you are praying to the almighty god the god is almighty and all powerful there are times he may not answer our prayers or he may give us a delayed answer but scripture says very clearly his ears are inclined to us listening all the time faith as an armor of god faith the work of faith is an armor of god it's an armor that's what paul says it's a shield of faith Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16 above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one the shield is the first wall of defense unless you have your faith up your shield up some of those flaming arrows may even penetrate your armor that you have enemy does not want you to believe god enemy doesn't want you to have faith he will sow doubts into your mind it is our faith or our belief as a shield that is able to quench all the fiery darts look at how paul describes it not ordinary darts it's a fiery dart it's very dangerous and you need to have your faith up yes we all worry we are all stressed sometimes but believe yes we have the right to be stressed but we also are asked to believe because the one whom we believe is a god of all creation faith is an armor of 24/7 use for a christian 24/7 even when you go to bed when you go to sleep you must bend your knees and say lord watch over me as i sleep the world or the evil one same is on the christian no matter what challenges we go through our shield of faith must be held up yes sometimes we we feel down we feel depressed i always love that uh, uh, that uh, man who went to the lord and said that uh, these demons from my son who your disciples did not drive out and the lord said you see you must believe and he said lord i believe but help my unbelief i believe lord but help my unbelief we are flesh battle for your mind and heart the helmet the hope of salvation paul himself towards the end of first thessalonians in chapter 5 verse 8 before going to hope i'm mentioning this because it is a part of the armor he says but let us who are of the day who are of the day christians are what of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet the hope of salvation so you see faith love and hope these are the essentials of a christian once you receive the lord into your life god the holy spirit comes and makes a dwelling in you and then these three virtues must fill your life watchfulness versus sleep sobriety versus drunkenness that is why paul is saying 
you who are of the day be sober. Don't let your guard slip. As we are of the day, we must watch and be sober. Paul uses the images of a soldier's armor to illustrate the idea of watchfulness. He's equipped to do that with his armor. Faith and love are the best spread that it covers the vital organ. No soldier would ever go to battle without his breastplate, without his helmet. Because his life depends upon him. My dear Christian, are you living in this world without the breastplate, without the helmet? Or have you, is your head itchy and you want to put down your helmet for a moment? Your shield down for a moment? No. You are in the battlefield. You are in the battlefield. As a Christian. That's what Paul is telling us. No Christian can live Christian life without the helmet or salvation or the breastplate. That is faith and love. The helmet protects the head, which is just as essential as a breastplate. Now, I'll spend a moment on this. See, when we live in this world, there is a great battle for our mind. A great battle for our mind. And it is the battle for our thoughts, for our desires. Internet, the most useful instrument, isn't it? Without which I don't think today man can live. It's as important as his breath. If the internet goes down, you're upset. No telephone, no communication, no computer, no World Wide Web. Internet exposes your mind. Social media, we all know. It is the promotion of the self. These are all battling for your mind, battling for your time, battling to take you away from the truth of God. Advertising. Convincing you to buy something. Playing on your mind. You know, if I want to buy a pair of shoes and I search online about shoes, till I buy the shoes or even after I buy the shoes, every time I open the net, there will be shoes all over. How do they know? Internet. It is trying to take you away, trying to manipulate you. You don't have the freedom to make a choice. They impression your mind. You know, when back home in India, there was one TV called Onida. And the slogan was, it was, it was, a, it was a super advertising uh, slogan. It said, neighbors envy and owners pride. So what are the two things? Envy and pride to buy a TV. See how subtly the evil one impresses you. Nike, just do it. Just do it. And uh, Apple, think different. Don't think normally. Think out of the box. Airbnb belong anywhere, everywhere. Old Spice, an old advertisement, my days. That the advertisement slogan is the original. If your grandfather hadn't worn it, you wouldn't exist. <laughs> my dear brothers and sisters, there is a constant attack for your mind, for your thinking. That's why God has, Paul says, be sober. We live in this world. We need internet. We need social media. 
we need advertising but don't allow that to master you put on your helmet of salvation know that what you have to do is written in the scripture let no media take you out of the scripture it's a battle for your mind you know it's a battle for your mind your heart also the mind and heart of your little one you know how much they are influenced i have a grandson and there's nothing wrong isn't it but the influence even toys have on their mind my grandson used to sing when we when i used to drop him to school he used to sing with me all the hymns of late i tell him, i ask him and he says papa monu you will sing pop patrol song Paw Patrol is not wrong, it's a toy. I enjoy it, I watch it also with him. But there is a thin line of how much the world, the media, and behind this, the ruler of this world can manipulate us, our families, our children. The working of faith is a real life experience. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. By faith this, he, they saw the unseen God as more real than the enraged king. The enraged king they could see is getting angry. But their eyes was on the unseen God. Not on the anger of the king. Daniel chapter 3. We all know this. So I'll just run through it. And they said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. He will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, even if he doesn't deliver, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods. Nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. I am willing to die. And willing to be burnt. And Daniel 3 19 to 20, Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, fury, and he commanded they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, Abadligo, and cast them into the burning fire, fiery furnace. This is a real life experience. The fruit of the working of faith. Now this was the faith Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego displayed. Standing firm in spite of threat to their life. Now the fruit, what was the result of their faith? The king Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. He rose in haste and spoke. Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered, true, O king. Look! He answered, I see four men loose, not bound. Four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. They are not hurt. And the four form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of kings and the lord of lords, according to this world, According to what he has achieved. Yes, he's saying the fourth one looks like the son of God. The fruit of faith. The fruit of faith. And then he says, the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. There is no other God who can deliver like this. There is no other God who can deliver like this. My dear brothers and sisters, he is the same yesterday, today, forever. The God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego is our God, on whom we believe. Working faith sinks while in the fire. 
this is not Shadrak Meshak Abednego, but Jan Hus, the brave Czech martyr, was burned at the stake by the then Roman Catholic Church because he wanted the Bible for the common man. He wanted scripture to be read in the common language. And what did they do? They put him in fire. And while in the fire, he sang in Latin, Christ, thou son of living God, have mercy upon me. Singing through fire. That's faith working for you. That is the work of faith. Each one of us are equipped with the same faith that Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego have, or Jan Hus had, or Polly Karp had. Any of those, we can go to that level if we believe. If we believe, if we know our God, mountains will move. George Muller saw thousands of answered prayers. Thousands, thousands. You read his, his biography. It's amazing. Man of prayer. For him, he wrote, for faith to work, sight ceases. <laughs> your surround sound ceases. Your eyes must be fixed on the author and perfecter of your faith. Faith is the means of realizing our life in God. Faith is the telescope that brings the future promises of God into present focus. Faith is a telescope that brings the future promises of God into present focus now. I will never leave you nor forsake you. If I see through the binoculars, that is happening now for me. Faith is a, like a muscle. It grows stronger by regular use. So my dear brothers and sisters, have faith, believe all the time. The Thessalonian church exercised their faith, their work of faith. Your labor prompted by love. Biblical idea of labor can be understood by the vocabulary of love of the ancient Greeks. I think we all know this. There are four types of love. Eros is an erotic love or a sensual love or a sexual love or a fleshly love. Storch refers to a family love, the kind of love that is between a parent and a child or between family members in general. Philia spoke of a brotherly friendship and affection. It is a deep, it is a love of deep friendship and partnership. Filial love may be described as the highest love that one is capable without God's help. David and Jonathan had that filial love. Then agape love is a fourth love. Agape can be described as an unchanging love or the love of Christ. This is a self-giving love that gives without demanding or expecting repayment. It is a love that can be given to the unlovable or the unappalling. It is a love that loves even when rejected. It is a love even you can give when you are at the receiving end. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear husband and wives, remember this is the love. Giving yourself to your spouse unconditionally having forgiveness not conditions see that is the love that Christ taught us John 21 15 says our Lord asked Peter three times do you love do you agape me do you love me Peter said you know I love you and John MacArthur was saying that this love, I don't know Greek and all that, but I learned from such Bible scholars. He said that the Lord used the word agape and uh, Peter used the word 
filio. Because Peter knew he could love God with an agape love. But what does God want from Peter? Do you love agape me? And then, what is the labor or the work of love? The Lord said, feed my lambs. This is the same thing that he is telling you and me. John, do you love me? Do you agape me? Yes, Lord. You know I love you. You know how much I love you. No, oh, John, not enough. You feed my lambs, tend my sheep. You serve me. You serve one another. You love your fellow brethren. You expend yourself for them. That's what the Lord is asking Paul, uh, Peter. Feed my lambs. God's labor of love. Or God's agape. Romans 5.8 But God demonstrates his own love towards us. In that while we were still sinners. Meaning unlovable. Christ died for us. He didn't die because we are Christians. He didn't die because we have something good in us. For God so sent, loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth faith in him, what happens? Shall not perish. That means those who don't have faith will perish. Shall not perish but have eternal life. Only two things. This agape love gives us an unconditional love. But also, if you reject that love, it is, you are going to perish. It is going to be an eternal death instead of an eternal life. It isn't the death of Jesus that is the ultimate demonstration of, the, of love. It is the death of Jesus together what it does for us that shows the epitome of love. Nature shows us God's greatness. Nature shows us his wisdom, intelligence, his mighty power, and also his love. But we needed the death of God the Son, Jesus Christ on the cross, for man's redemption to demonstrate his love. That is enough. The labor of love, when did it begin? From God, it began before time. The labor of love began before time. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 and 5. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. When did he choose us? Before earth was created. Revelation says the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. That means that love that God gave us was before all creation. He knew man would fail. He knew how wretched and miserable we would be. But still he chose to love us. That is agape love. And not only love us, he having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. And this amazing labor prompted by love continued through creation, through the fall of man, to the birth of our Redeemer in the likeness of sinful man, to Gethsemane, to the cross today at the right hand of God the Father seated for us. Yes, that agape love is seated at the right hand of God the Father. When the evil one blames that see God, your son John, he's got angry, he's doing something wrong. The Lord says, no, I have paid for his penalty. I have paid for his sins. I have washed him by my blood. He is mine. Get some in a pictures the labor of love. Luke 22, 41 to 44. Being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. Who is this? The creator of this universe. 
And if you look at the beginning of that in verse 41, he says, he knelt down and prayed. Our Lord Jesus bent his knees. That is a labor of love. Do we bend our knees? Yeah, if your knees are not working, don't bend it. Or if you're old, don't bend it. But if you can, do it. If you can, do it. Because the Lord did it for you. In the garden of Gethsemane, he did it for you. You know, I never knew about family prayer and all that. When I was in my sister's place, I stayed with her. I saw the family prayer. My sister and brother-in-law would sit and pray. But their children used to kneel down. I was just a baby trying to know God. I was a wretched man. But I knew along with those children, I also started kneeling down. Until my children grew up, got married and left home, I also knelt down with them. Every day in the morning. There was a time as family, when I was working in a school, that morning and evening, we used to have a family prayer. I was working, Shaija was working. My children had to go to school. But still, we prayed in the morning, we prayed in the evening. We knelt down in the morning, we knelt down in the evening. It's very, very important, my dear brothers and sisters, bringing your family to the throne of grace, bringing your little ones to the throne of grace. This is what we need to follow. Get someone a sorrowful even to death. He began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. This is much before the cross. When you know all this, I'm not going into detail. And then he came back and saw his disciples and he told them, What? What? Could you not watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He knows our problem. He is willing to guide us. He is willing to teach us. Yes, your spirit is willing. That is love. But your flesh is weak. My dear children of God, overcome your flesh. Put on the armor of God. Christ love after Gethsemane. The God of all creation was taken in the night, questioned, humiliated by the Jewish leaders, taken to Pilate, scourged, beaten, made fun of, spat upon, crown of thorns on his head, then publicly carrying the cross. Publicly carrying the cross. With people laughing. With soldiers whipping him. Even falling under its weight. He was so much tortured that he fell down under its weight. Nailed to the cross. Disrobed. Disrobed. It's a humiliation. Publicly crucified as the worst criminal in between two lesser criminals. Who was a bigger criminal? Who was a bigger criminal? The Lord of this universe, the Lord Jesus Christ. For you and for me. This is agape love. This is the labor of love. The meaning of labor is an intense or physical or mental exertion. Extremely difficult and painful. Physically and emotionally. Hardship, suffering, pain, distress. That is labor. And that is what our Lord did for us. And that's what the Thessalonian church had. The labor of love. Christ likeness of our Lord's mandate. John 20, 21. As the Father sent me, I send you. Wow. This is amazing. God the Father sent the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now the Lord is telling you and me, as the Father sent me, I sent you. Are you willing to go? Christ likeness. 
This is the mandate you and I have to become like Christ. Sending us whom he has chosen before the foundation of the earth to be Christ-like or in other words, true Christians. John 15, 9 to 13. He says, abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. How do we love one another? Not only husband, wife and children, one another. All believers, why even your enemies, that's what the Lord asked us to do. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down his own life for his friends. The Lord is telling us the working of your love is to even go to the extent of dying for your friend, for your fellow brethren. Can we do it? No. But this is our mandate. The focus here is on loving the brethren. If we can't even love our brethren, what kind of Christians are we? What kind of Christians are we? Love as a foundation for a Christian. Thessalonians, uh, which the Thessalonians had. Paul begins the love chapter. We will read the beginning and the ending only. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 and 3. Though I speak with tongues of men or of angels, or I preach and I am a great uh, servant of God and have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal, empty vessel making a noise if I don't have love. And he says, and though I have the gift of prophecy, understand all the mysteries, all knowledge, though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, you have nothing. Goes on like that. Though I bestow all my goods, I am generous. I feed the poor. I do so many good things, but have not love. It profits me nothing. 13th verse, now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of them is love. 1 Thessalonians 1, 3. You are endurance inspired by hope. Your endurance, endurance, patience, inspired by hope. Patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, the fruit of hope. We say hope, no, hope is a wonderful word. Man lives on hope, but there has to be an endurance or a patience. What should our patience be upon? What should our hope be upon? Christ in you, the hope of glory. There are no quick fix solutions for a Christian. Once he is in Christ, he is a new creation in Christ and begins the Christian journey or the Christian walk with his eyes on his eternal hope. The Lord Jesus Christ, Colossians 1, 26 to 28. The mystery which has hidden from ages, from generation, has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, what is the mystery? Which is Christ in you. And what is Christ in you? The hope of glory. That is what is in you. Him Christ we preach. Warning every man. Teaching every man. In all wisdom. That we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That is your and my role. Each one of us, we must warn, we must teach, we must encourage, we must love. And what we should look for as a church, we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. This is the work, this is the labor, this is the hope. Working faith, 
laboring love and enduring faith are the essentials of a true Christian life. I just have a few more verses and I'll conclude. Colossians 1 verse 3 to 5. This is Paul writing to the Colossians. We give thanks to God, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying for you always. I love this, this Paul. Always he's praying. He's praying for so many people, so many churches. Praying always for you. Since we have heard of your faith. One, in Christ Jesus. Your love for all the saints. So what is the love for? For all your saints. All your fellow brethren. Because the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. Why should we love? Why should we have labor of love? Why should we have the work of, in our faith? Because of the hope that is laid up in heaven. My dear brothers and sisters, we are pilgrims right now. We are just traveling this journey. One day, we, our bodies will see death. But we will pass on from this life to an eternity with Christ. Wow, what a wonderful day that would be. Isn't it? That is the hope that is laid up for you and me. So we cannot live like hopeless people. We need not be worried. We need not be stressed. And then Galatians 5, 5, 6. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. We wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. And it says, For in Christ neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. Faith, love and hope. The essentials of a Christian examine ourselves. Pressing on to our hope. Pressing on to our hope, strengthened by the working of our faith and laboring for love. This is not a sprint, not a hundred meters dash. This is a marathon. I am 62, going to be 63. I don't know how many years, how many months, how many days. But it's a marathon. It is not a sprint. Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. At the end of his life, I'm already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Paul is very sure. Can we say like Paul, we have kept the faith of keeping the faith. And he says, finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge will give to me on that day, on the day he meets us. And then he says, will give to me on that day, not to me only, to who else, but also to all who have loved his appearing. A crown of righteousness is there for you for the taking. All you have to do is wait for the Lord. Wait for His coming. Working in faith. Laboring in love. Patiently waiting. Maranatha, come soon Lord Jesus. Paul has endured. Paul was steadfast in his hope. Paul was patient to the end. His end is at hand. After about 30 years, after his meeting the Lord on the road to Damascus, Paul is telling Philippians 3.14 I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the call for you and for me. Are we pressing on? Are we pressing on? Absolutely indispensable in a Christian life is endurance inspired by hope. Meaning to continue in Christ day after day, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, till we receive that upward call. It can come with your breath stopping here. It can come with the trump of God, voice of the archangel, the command of God. And in a twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ will rise. 
And we who are here, together with them, we will be caught up, be there to see the Lord, behold his glory. What a wonderful day that would be. What a glorious day that would be. For that, we need a work of faith. We need the labor of love. We need patiently waiting for that hope. One last verse, Romans 15, 5 to 6. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement, who gives endurance, who gives encouragement, God, give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had. So whose mind God was going to give you or given you? The mind of Christ Jesus. So that with one mind and one voice, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, I am concluding here. I will encourage each one of you, draw nearer to God. Remember, put on the full armor of God. Hold up the shield of faith. And be one with your fellow brethren. Encouraging, teaching, warning, listening. You are that one in Christ. Challenge yourself. If you have not given your life to Christ, this is the moment. You need not stand up. You need not put your hand up. In your heart, all you need to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart right now. There is room in my heart for you, Lord. I want you to reign in my heart. I want to be that new creation in Christ. I want to have that work of faith. I need that labor of love. Make that a choice. If you need that today, if not, press on. If you have already made the choice, press on. And we have the last hymn is after that, pressing on. Uh, I love the higher ground. I love the lyrics. I'm pressing on the upward way.